All right. Good morning and good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us for today's session. My name is Neerav Shah, and I am a senior solutions architect at AWS. Been with AWS for last two years, and as a part of my role, I work closely with my EPN partners. And Stratus Train is definitely one of our favorite partner to work with, with anything or any key workload that we have to work regarding AWS and helping our end customers. Uh, so a quick uh, overview about like what we will be discussing in this presentations. Hopefully it's gonna be uh, uh, easy. And my goal is to have you guys understand uh, basic information about like what AWS is uh, as a, a, a company and what different uh, infrastructures that we provide to our end customers and uh, our global reach as well as a brief overview about the EC2, uh, which is like our key service uh, that we are gonna be discussing in this presentation and some of the details about the EC2. So um, generally, like, you know, uh, we have been helping out at customers from over the decade uh, and uh, the cloud have been evolving uh, drastically in last uh, decade uh, or more than that, in fact. So the uh, so how basically customers are leveraging AWS and how are they getting a key advantage and benefits uh, that you could see on the screen screen more broadly about having the low cost elastic elasticity and bringing the agility to help the <clears throat> end customer by delivering new services and features quickly and adopting their market needs as well as it's an open platform for being a very flexible for the builders to extend the frameworks and give them the ability to develop uh, their applications and infrastructures uh, without and worrying about you know, managing the underlying infrastructures and doing the uh, like heavy lifting that they, they generally would have to do on managing these infrastructures and services. So in this screen, we did uh, briefly highlighted about what is the cloud. So the way that I generally refer the cloud computing uh, is, is it refers to the on-demand delivery of IT resources via internet <clears throat> and especially uh, more about like pay as you go pricing model. So instead of like you buying, owning and maintaining your own um, data centers and servers, um, organizations can acquire uh, the uh, acquire this technology, such as like the compute power, storage, databases, um, and other services as a need basis. So it is very similar. Like you know, if I have to give you an example, it is very similar. Like how a consumers flip a switch to turn on the lights in their home. And the power company sends the electricity and they only have to pay for the amount of time that they will be using this electricity. So with cloud computing, AWS uh, manages and maintains the technology infrastructures in a secured environment um, and the business um, like can easily assess and access these uh, resources via the internet to develop and run their applications with highly uh, reliable uh, and like you know cost effective manner uh, on these uh, global infrastructures and your capacity can grow and shrink instantly and business only has to pay for what they have been using. So most of our customers gets benefit of our global infrastructures and we have been providing our global infrastructures with more than 190 countries around the world. Uh, and the key benefits, uh, we will be even talking more details uh, in upcoming slides are more about like having to gain the low cost, um, agility and elasticity as we discussed, uh, along with uh, flexibility for builders to build and be flexible with their um, um, application needs and um, building a secure environment uh, and applications uh, along with uh, global reach, go to market and go globally uh, in minutes. So, um, uh, as we have, I have mentioned, like we have been the, we have pioneered this uh, global, uh, like uh, AWS as a platform. Uh, and this, uh, we have inherited this practice in terms of helping our own internal application or highly available, highly scalable application that we, we have been building and managing, which is known as amazon.com. And we have gained this experience over the decade to help manage and scale uh, and uh, run these highly available and scalable applications. <clears throat> so as we talk internally, then there is no compression algorithm uh, when it comes to the experience. So we have been managing 
and building a cloud since 2006, which is like more than a decade uh, into this uh, era. And then we have a breadth and depth of the services. And what I mean by that, we have different services from networking, compute, storage, um, and many different areas. But alongside those services, we have more than 175 plus services to support, uh, to virtually let you run any kind of workload that can meet your business needs. Um, and then pace of innovations, uh, we have been innovating at a faster clip, especially around the areas of machine learning, compute, IoT, database, analytics, uh, and many different uh, innovative uh, areas that is rapidly you know, going into the market to help our customers. And um, just alone, uh, every year, so we release more than 100 uh, new features uh, over the time since we have launched. And the pace of innovation is going faster and faster each and every uh, single day. Um, and then our Google footprint, we will be talking briefly about like what we mean by the regions, the availability zones and uh, edge locations. Uh, but it's, it's in a nutshell, uh, this is where uh, AWS has a concept called a region, which is a physical locations around the world uh, where we cluster our data centers. And we call each group of this logical data center as an availability zone. So each region is consist of multiple availability zones and each availability zone is uh, going to consist more than one data centers. And using the uh, and using this AWS, customer can leverage uh, close to 77 uh, availability zones across uh, 26 different regions. And uh, not only that, we have 205 edge locations. In fact, we have 211 or I think 215, more, more, more than 211 plus kind of point of presence, which includes like the edge locations as well as the uh, regional caches. And these are the areas where our customers can leverage the CDN and uh, help them build the kind of low latency applications to cache their contents around closer to their uh, end users. And then our pricing uh, philosophy. Uh, since we have launched our AWS uh, over the time, we have reduced our pricing more than 80 percent, uh, more than 80 times since we have launched since 2016. And uh, not only that, our AWS is also comprised of uh, more than tens of thousands of different uh, partner systems, uh, which includes uh, both the system integrators as well as the uh, ISV and the technology partners. So our customer can get the benefit of really leveraging some of their existing partners and the software they had, that they have been using on their on-premise to have that flexibility to run those softwares on AWS as well. Um, so our 12 years in the cloud computing market has provided us with a long runway to hone our experience uh, uh, in delivering the massive scale infrastructures. And there are two areas where our experience particularly, uh, you know, like shines. Um, and the first is the operations. So um, even before we launch our first service, we were focusing on the architecture and the operations of our globally distributed data centers that we I just highlighted in earlier slide. And our engineers are uh, relentlessly working to uh, eliminate any potential failures that they can uh, ever encounter uh, in our data center. So we continuously work to make sure our data center strengths are um, stronger in terms of meeting the SLAs and, and any kind of uh, operational excellence that we have to achieve uh, to help our end customers. And um, taking the advantage of multi availability zones uh, provides the exceptional operational stability for our customers to go and run and develop their applications to make it highly available, uh, fault tolerant and reliable applications across the multiple availability zones. And we are committed to 100% transparencies for the operational health of our entire global infrastructure. So our customers can go to our dashboard that you can see in the last point to quickly go and take a look at any kind of outage or any uh, kind of uh, uh, information that they are looking to get away for any of our available uh, data centers or availability. I mean, not on the data centers level, but more about the availability zones or any of the service level outage. They can easily get a visibility into there using our uh, globally available data uh, like health dashboard. 
Um, and then, as I mentioned, the key advantages of having going into the cloud is it can let our customers to trade for their capital expenses to the variable expenses. And it goes back to the example that I mentioned earlier, that customers can easily convert their capital expenses by only spending the money for what they should be using, using uh, the variable expenses. So that way, customers can only have to pay for what they will be using. And um, as I mentioned, since 2006, we have reduced our pricing more than 80 times. Uh, and that happens just because of our large scale of the infrastructures and the, uh, that we carry. And we try to uh, pass those cost saving back to our customers in terms of the price reduction. So that's a normal trend in our culture to reduce our price uh, wherever is applicable. And we provide multiple pricing options for our customers to choose and run their workload. So we, uh, when we talk about the EC2, we do have different models where customers can acquire these uh, compute resources either with the on-demand uh, uh, use cases based on like their uh, work trend, the kind of traffic that they are expecting, or they can even go for a reserved instances where they can reserve the capacity for one to three years. And that can give customers a significant uh, uh, cost saving in terms of upfront commitment for one to three years uh, buying those resources. And then the last model is more about the spot instance, which we'll be again talking uh, briefly in upcoming slides. And then um, the more you can uh, uh, use our services, we do have a tiered pricing and the volume discounts. So customers can have a multiple organizations running under them and all of them can get a kind of organization level discounts for the services and the volume. The higher the volume can go, the uh, different la levels and tiers of pricing can apply to their uh, uh, services uh, and, and the bills. Uh, so uh, uh, going back to our global reach, so this is like a, a footprint uh, kind of design that shows like how our regions have been clustered, how the regions are. So as I said, mentioned like AWS has the concept of region, which is nothing more than like a physical locations around the globe where we clusters are data centers. And each of these clusters of logical data center that I have highlighted, we call it availability zone. So a region is consists of multiple availability zone. Generally, it's gonna be minimum two availability zone. And in some regions, we have up to maximum six availability zones. And each region consists um, um, multiple isolated uh, physical separate uh, availability zones. So they are completely isolated from each other in terms of making them highly available. Have available. So in, that means like they have a dedicated separate uh, networking power, uh, uh, different physical locations. But at the same time, they are also connected to each other with the high, uh, like the fiber optic cables, which provides more than 100 gigs of connectivity internally. So that way our customers can still live leverage those availability zone to achieve the highly available application, but they can still achieve the low latency between those availability zones. And it's very different than like uh, when you hear, hear this kind of concepts in, in with the different providers, but it's more uh, like, uh, like we often define a region as a single data center, like what other providers define. We don't define it as a single data center. So the AZ uh, designed for every regions offer advantage to our customers with having the more than one uh, uh, data centers are clustered together. And then each of them, as I said, like are independent in terms of power, cooling or physical securities and uh, any kind of other physical isolations that we have to achieve to make sure each of these uh, data centers are highly available. And then, as you can see in this globe, we have regions uh, across like North America, South America, um, uh, Europe, China, Asia Pacific, uh, South Africa, and uh, the Middle East. Uh, and then this is a concept which I mentioned earlier, we have a point of presence. So we have 216 different cloud front, front uh, point of presence and cloud front is a, a fast content delivery CDN service that securely deliver the data, video, or like even if you have applications and APIs to customers globally with very low latency, uh, high transfer speed with all the developer friendly environment. So they can easily cache any of their content closer to where their users are. And we have 205 edge locations and uh, 11 different uh, regional edge caches. So they can even cache their content on the edge location level or the on, on the regional 11 different regional uh, level cache that they can contain. 
Um, and then the, uh, we have more than 100 Direct Connect uh, locations. So Direct Connect is a cloud service solutions that makes it easy for uh, to establish a dedicated network connections from your on-premise to AWS. So you either have like your on-premise data center location or you might be having a colo and you want to have a dedicated connectivity to AWS. And this is where the Direct Connect plays a, a, a key role where you can have a dedicated connections and with uh, different uh, bandwidth options and your inter traffic will not be traversing through the internet, but mainly it will be having a dedicated connections between the AWS and your data centers or your office or your colo locations. Uh, and that reduce your network cost. It can increase your bandwidth throughput and also provide a more consistent network experience than the internet-based connections that you can uh, achieve. <clears throat> Uh, going back to the availability zone. So within the region, I say, as I mentioned, like we have the different availability zones and AZ gives the ability to operate production applications and the database that are more highly available and fault tolerant and uh, scalable than would be possible from a single data center. So we have 69 availability zones and customers can, within a region, they can, they can deploy, they can have the applications being deployed into the multi AZ. Um, and then even if uh, some cases when they have some uh, like regional requirements and they want to go with a highly uh, region based uh, architecture, they can even do a cross region uh, architecture as well. So each AZ can um, be multiple data centers, typically two, varies to um, two to six <clears throat> and uh, at full scale can have hundreds. Uh, and thousands of servers within each of them. And they are fully isolated um, uh, in our global infrastructures. And uh, they are, when I say isolated, that means they are going to have their own power infrastructures uh, and they are physically separated by meaningfully distance to avoid any kind of disaster that could, natural disaster that could happen. And uh, they can be away from each other from different miles to different kilometers, uh, generally around 100 kilometers or 60 miles apart from each other. So each EZ is gonna be separated from each other physically around this distance. Uh, and then we are going to be doing a quick overview about what is EC2. So um, we have a different compute services to provide uh, to our customers. And even though we are going to be focused more about the EC2, which is a Elastic Compute Cloud, uh, but we do have a different services such as the ECS, EKS, and Fargate, which can let our customers run their container or Dockerized workload uh, on uh, their selected platforms uh, using either ECS, which is a fully uh, managed uh, container orchestration framework, or uh, customers can also run their workload uh, if they are running using the open source or the Kubernetes uh, work uh, kind of containers on their own premise, they can also use our managed uh, Amazon Elastic Kubernetes service to run their Kubernetes workload, which manages the unmodified upstream uh, version of the Kubernetes. Or even they can go with our uh, serverless offering, which is uh, Fargate, where customers can run uh, and they don't even have to worry about managing their control plane or they don't have to worry about managing and orchestrating or resources, anything under the need. And then we have uh, AWS Lambda, which is our serverless compute for, uh, and this is mainly very useful for customers who are looking to build a kind of eventless or even triggered architecture, and they don't want to worry about any of the underlying infrastructures. And it can, uh, they don't have to worry about managing or scaling out, scaling in, or defining the capacities or anything. So this is really a good uh, service. Uh, it's one of the very popular service from AWS platform. So instance is the most mature area of our compute platform and with deep investment and long running uh, proven uh, ex experience in this space. It is also where customers have the greatest need uh, for choice to support uh, their current and the future applications. So for instance, like we offer different choice across the number of dimensions. So we have uh, EC2 instance where we have a different operating system that we support that can be either <clears throat> to let customer run from the EC2, I mean, the, the Linux based operating system or the Windows based operating, operating system. In addition to that, we also provide customers to meet their different architecture needs. We provide x86 architecture as well as ARM, and we even have our own <clears throat> uh, 
uh, provided uh, architectures, which is uh, Amazon EC2 provided like a Graviton uh, uh, architectures to help customer run different kind of uh, 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 like their architecture processor needs that they are looking for. We have bare metal disk and networking capabilities. So customers have a different option when it comes to choose the EC2 instance. They have a different options to either use the bare metal uh, instance or they can have a certain workload who requires a high IO can have a different use case to select from the family which is optimized for the disk or networking capabilities. And uh, as I said, like customers can have different options in terms of the pricing. They can go for the on-demand or RI or the spot uh, based instances. So uh, a quick uh, information and the EC2 terminologies. EMI is referred to as an Amazon machine image, and that is nothing more than a kind of template where you can have a package your operating system, you can install an additional software, and you want to create that as a template for you to uh, use uh, in a um, repeatable manner for provisioning your EC2 instances and standardizing all of your EC2 instances and management configurations across all of them. So uh, an AMI, once you create an AMI, customer would have ability to create the AMI using the console or they can use the Amazon um, CLI to create the AMI. And using the AMI, customers can provision multiple instances. And in short, like uh, the instantiation of the AMI or the running uh, instantiation of the AMI is uh, is going to be uh, called as a kind of uh, EC2 instance where you have those AMIs been uh, launched or, or installed. So you can have a specific network environment and you can even uh, decide like how you want to provision your EC2 instances. So uh, the outer bo body that you see here is our global regions and within those uh, region we have multiple availability zones and each of these availability zone is going to consist of the VPC which is a virtual private cloud which is a dedicated isolated cloud environment just for our customers where they can provision the AWS resources and our customers can provision the resources across the multiple availability zone. And each of these resources are going to have an instant store backed by the EBS volume, which is gonna help customer do a storage for, which is binded with the uh, Amazon EC2. And each of these EC, uh, its EBS volumes, uh, our block level storage are gonna be highly available and uh, uh, durable. So that means each of this copy, it's going to have minimum three copies being replicated across the single availability zone. But at the same time, when customers wants to go and achieve more uh, durability and availability, uh, each of, they can create a snapshot of those e EBS volumes and those uh, snapshots will be stored into the Amazon S3, which is our objects uh, level storage service, uh, highly durable, highly available service. Um, and then that way customers can even take the snapshots of their EBS volumes and even can have ability to replicate across the multiple uh, availability zone in case if they want to get more high availability and durability of their EBS volumes. Um, EC2 naming uh, conventions, the way that we define, uh, you generally go to our consoles and when customer selects the EC2, uh, as they have, we have a different instance families, which basically you can see the first later uh, says C here, which means a compute optimize. We have different um, uh, uh, families to choose, to let customer choose maybe a graphic intensive workload or they probably have a, a memory intensive workload. So they, the first letter here defines the instance family based on the workload. Uh, it can be general purpose workload which, where they have the right balance of the CPU as well as the memory or they could have a very highly compute optimized uh, they where they need a lot of compute related so they can go for the compute uh, instance family or similar to that memory or networking uh, or uh, io based uh, workload that they can select from those instance family and then the next later defines the instance generation. So C5, every year we release a newer and newer generations of those instances and their families. So that's why you can see the, the next later highlights the fifth generations of the computer instance. Uh, and the N um, attributes define like uh, what, what is based is used for. So it's gonna be, N in this case is gonna be a network uh, uh, related use cases. It could have a D for the local storage or maybe M for the metal, bare metal or G for the GPUs, um, et cetera. 
And, and the uh, size uh, define like how much memory is and how much CPU, what is the size it's going to consist when you use a C5N and with the X large family. So in next slides, if you can see uh, the same example, if you can take it further, we have C4X8X uh, X, 8X large, which is equivalent to having a two C4X uh, uh, large. And that even you can go more granular, you can even um, have a, like four C4X2X large instances and subsequently. Uh, we provide customers the ability to choose different processors. Um, so beyond the operating system, we are providing you the choice of processor and architecture to build the, uh, the applications you need uh, with uh, considering the flexibility in choice that you need to drive with your workload. So we we'll believe we believe that um, we want to provide a different uh, choices to our customers. So customer can choose the right compute uh, to power their applications and the workload. We um, have a long-term partnership with Intel uh, and then Cascade the leg processors uh, uh, along with like, you know, the some of the most powerful instances such as C5 Metal or C5 24X Large or C5 12X Large. So we do provide different you know, partnership with different uh, vendors. And NVIDIA is also helps uh, uh, to power your machine with the, any kind of, you know, like a machine learning workload that you are trying to run or even like the graphic and GPU based instance workload that you want to learn, run. We do provide the NVIDIA based uh, processor uh, and instance family as well. So one of the very clear way that this manifests itself is our uh, instance delivery. So we, uh, where every year we ensure that you will have the absolute latest and greatest platform on which you can build your applications. So I will not really go into too much detail here, but you can see like the different instance families from the general purpose uh, to the compute optimized, memory optimized, uh, and then the storage based need as well. So customers can choose different instance family with different instance uh, sizing to, to use the right instance to do the right job for their applications based on their application need. If they are IO bound applications or they are memory bound applications or, or CPU bound applications. Um, so in those kind of situations, customer have more flexibilities and options to choose from different uh, instance families uh, and instance types. Um, we support different uh, operating systems, which are uh, listed here. So it's a Windows uh, based operating system. We have different versions and I would encourage you to take a look at our um, uh, AWS documentations to keep an eye about all the instance and new um, instance that we keep releasing. We support Amazon Linux, Debian, as well as CentOS, Ubuntu, uh, Ubuntu, as well as Red uh, Hat Enterprise Linux. So customers can have options to choose a different operating system that they can, they would like to uh, bundle with their EC2 uh, instance. Um, customer can, when, when they can go to the console, they can select a different um, AMI, uh, which is built or customer would have an ability to create their own AMI that they could use for their own uh, instance uh, in their platform across like multiple availability zone when they would like to provision different and new instances based on that template that they will be creating. At the same time, we have a, a EWS marketplace. So where our uh, customers and the partners across the world release their own versions of the AMI. So customer would also choose and have the flexibility to go and choose any of the existing uh, 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 like the AMI, which our partners have, or even like customers would have released into the AWS marketplace. Um, Going back to the purchasing options. So we have different um, uh, purchasing and pricing options based on what customer need, based on their needs. So for example, like any kind of spiky workload where uh, you uh, want to have a workload which is very unpredictable. Uh, for those kind of use cases, customers would generally go for pay for compute, which is the on-demand instance. Uh, and there you have only have to pay for the seconds with the amount of uh, durations of the time that customer will be using those EC2 instance. And they, they get charged by per second. 
Uh, and the good part is you don't need a long-term commitment. That means you can only use for the durations. For example, like if you have a retailer website and if you are expecting a huge traffic to your portal during like any kind of promotions that you are running or during even like a holiday season. So that time you probably don't know how the uh, spike is going to happen. So in those kind of situations, customer can definitely go for on demand where they don't have to go and buy those uh, instances upfront and they can easily scale out and scale scale in based on their uh, production uh, tra the traffic and they only have to pay for the duration where they have used those instances. On the other side, for a steady state workload where you already know that you have certain applications and those applications and workload are going to continuously run for me, for example, like uh, out of 24 hours, every day they are going to run minimum 18 hours or maybe 12 hours, 14 hours, whatsoever it is. As long as you know the uh, utilizations of your uh, resources, customers can also go for a reserved instance where they can give us get a significant price reductions uh, uh, with the upfront commitment from one to three year uh, uh, and then uh, of the uh, like you know the on demand prices so they can get the significant discount and they can use the reserved instances which is a reserved capacity for uh, you as a customer in AWS infrastructure and then spot instances, spot are our unused uh, capacity, which is available for our customers, uh, where our customers can go and use, uh, uh, un, uh, it's a spare unused capacity available for uh, our AWS platform. So it gives customers up to 90% off demand prices because customers can go and uh, define a pricing bidding that they can expect and they can uh, have their uh, their pricing, their, they can fit their pricing model and then, uh, um, Any time the uh, the bidding goes up, the customers are going to get notified about uh, the uh, pricing policy, and customers would definitely uh, need to make sure that their applications are fault tolerant. So you need to build some intelligence in your application. Uh, for this could be good for like running a kind of like if you are running an EMR clusters, and if you have like a, a task node which can tolerate like the uh, fault tolerance, and then you can be still rerun those jobs on your need basis. So those kind of workload are really good where customers can still save a, save a significant money using the uh, spot instances. And then lastly, we have a saving plans uh, is a flexible pricing model that provide a saving of up to 72% on your AWS compute usage. So this pricing model offers lower pricing on EC2 instance uh, and regardless, you can choose any instance family, you can have any size or even like operating system, tenancy or across even different regions. Uh, and um, this even applies to the AWS Fargate the serverless uh, content orchestration service that I mentioned earlier, as well as the Lambda usage. Um, as we take a step back, let's bring all together the choice that we offer to our instances. Part of customer choice is delivering on your specific workload needs. That's what our goal is. So we have done uh, with you know, uh, innovating on different general purpose, burstable workload, as well as very specialized instance uh, to meet customer needs. So as you can see, we have different categories, which is like uh, let your customer run their workload, either uh, memory bound or storage bound or GPU intensive workload. And then they have a different capabilities to choose from different processors going from AWS on uh, Graviton to Intel to AMD and different processors feed to meet customers need. And then they have different storage options uh, from going from the elastic block storage. And then I'm not gonna be talking more about the S3 or different other globally storage services, but they can have uh, 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 elastic graphics or elastic inference for like example, running your machine learning workload. You can sort of buying the GPU based instances which are quite expensive uh, upfront and doing the commitment, you can add the right amount of GPU that is required for your job. So it's elasticity that you can bring in terms of bringing the GPU only for the duration that you need for those machine learning heavy uh, workload or even same, same for the uh, elastic graphics. So with that, we have more than 200 plus instance type for virtually let you run any kind of workload and meet any of your need that you have uh, to run your workload in AWS. And then we are going to quickly take a look at like how the EC2 is uh, uh, like the design as overall. So uh, on a high level, what happens when an instance is launched from a hypervi hypervisor slot uh, in this presentation, right? 
So as you can see, we have uh, physical servers in AWS uh, global regions. And on top of those physical servers, we have the, which is known as a host server. We have a hypervisor and that hypervisor basically um, um, is, uh, uh, we use, it's a highly modified version of Zen and KVM hypervisors. And when an instance is launched, we look across our fleet for an available slot to run their instance. And when an instance is launched, we um, hard partition both the memory as well as the CPU allocation. So uh, we are not uh, like, you know, uh, uh, bellowing the memory over uh, the overshooting, uh, like the, the memory or the CPU, but we make the right balance on what customer is expecting to achieve for that guest operating system when they, when they provision this uh, EC2 instance on the hypervisors. So each instance must be launched with at least one security group. group. And uh, the security group that we are going to briefly touch upon in the next slide is consist of all the control which allows like what network access in and out of your instances. And security group uh, con um, control access regardless of whether the instance is talking to another instance. Um, uh, or when, as long as it is attached immediately after the uh, it, it has been provisioned. So this is like a bare bone architectures where you provision your EC2 instance, which you can see uh, at the top is a guest operating system, but these all are the virtual machines that are running on the same host operating system, but completely isolated on each and every layer to provide the right resources uh, needed to have you run your EC2 instance. Uh, as I have mentioned earlier, I think we have briefly already touched upon this one. We provide a highly um, modified Zen-based architecture for the hypervisor, as well as we have the AWS Nitro, uh, Nitro hypervisor, which is a KVM-based hypervisor, something that we have launched as of uh, 2017. And then we also provide access to our customers where they can have a bare metal, uh, which is going to have a direct access to the power and the memory resources under the needs of the physical uh, servers where they launch. Um, so security group, um, like uh, basically security groups allows uh, tighter security controls on your EC2 instance in terms of what uh, incoming and outgoing traffic can go in and out of your EC2 instance. So when you launch your EC2 instance, yeah, every EC2 instance can have one or more, sec more of the security rules or groups that you can define. And that security groups uh, is going to consist of the name, descriptions, or even the protocol, which is gonna be a port uh, like, and the uh, protocol is could be like HTTP or SSH, kind of access that you would like uh, to uh, allow for that particular EC2 instance in that VPC when you launch. Um, and then each of these EC2 instance are also going to have a IP address uh, and then you can define a CIDR range when you create your own VPC uh, architecture. We can define a network range that you wanna have for each of the subnet and within those subnet, you can provision those EC2 instances uh, to get those IP ranges. Um, a similar concept to what we just discussed, uh, but a little bit in more detail. So as you can see, we have different kind of workloads. Uh, some of them include the database driven workload, application uh, services that you are deploying, like maybe uh, applica web applications, and then you have a web server. So each of these groups of application that you define are going to have a different uh, security groups and uh, you can allow what is the incoming uh, traffic that you are expecting to accept the uh, on that particular uh, EC2 instance group. So here in example, as you can see, the database server is defined at the bottom is going to have an incoming traffic and communications only from the web application server. So no other services or no other traffic would be allowed other than the security groups, which is defined as incoming into the database uh, uh, server layer. So that is gonna be uh, your application server uh, or application, web application servers. And then similar to that on your web application server, you can have a load balancer or elastic load balancer where you can expect a traffic from the outbound. So here you can segregate each of this your EC2 instance and workload to have more security and you can control which server can have, which layers is going to allow what kind of incoming and outgoing traffic. 
And then finally, for your corporate data centers, your admins who would like to do a kind of administrative stuff, you can define a Bastion host where only certain people with certain access can log into the Bastion host to access those servers because those all of the EC2 instances are not going to be accessible anywhere outside of your VPC with these security groups and controls that you have defined. So as you can see, you can get more and more Titan security around your EC2 instances. Um, and then finally, uh, I think I don't have many more slides. I think uh, this would be like one or two more slides. But uh, when you create your EC2 instance, um, so it leverages a standard SSH key pairs to provide the initial access to, uh, to the OS operating system for our customers. So uh, basically the key pairs give them uh, a chance to down, it only gives you one chance to download the private key. And when you define the uh, EC2 instance and download the private key, the private key is something what a customer owns and that is going to enable them to access the EC2 instance. And the public key part of the key pair is stored on the EC2 uh, service. And this is going to give you a kind of uh, control only to the users who have the access to the private key will be allowed to log into those EC2 instances. Um, and then a quick overview about the same. So where the private key goes and where, where basically we store the public key. So public key, as I mentioned, is uh, available uh, through the metadata. So anytime when you launch any applications on the EC2 instance, those applications are going to have access to the metadata that was, have been written on to the EC2 instance. And every time, for example, the boot sequence includes like a startup script and that creates a random administrative password that you can access from the EC2 uh, log. And that will have an access to the public, public key from the instance metadata. So you can always go and encrypt even those with uh, those admin passwords with the public key and make the encrypted passwords available via the system log. Uh, and this gives an access for a very secured way for uh, only customers to get access to those EC2 instances uh, with the private key, public key uh, concept, as well as like only the metadata, uh, those will be accessible by the EC2 instance when you provision them. And then uh, different metadata attributes. So if any time every EC2 instance that we launch, if you see the top uh, high level, uh, like the HTTP command, if you ever run, it contains a wealth of information about all the metadata. So any EC2 instance that you ever launch in AWS, you can go to this command and you can try to access all the metadata available for that particular uh, EC2 instance. And that includes like your AMI ID that you have used to launch the particular instance or it includes the host name or even like the kernel level informations. Um, and then user can have an ability to even uh, define their own user defined script as a user uh, metadata section apart from this metadata. So as you can see here, when you provision a region, the region is going to let you choose, uh, create the VPC. And when you create the VPC, you can have that VPC span across the, the uh, different availability zones. So you can provision, uh, the concept of data center is very uh, different in terms of the AWS. We don't tie each VPC to a data center because the data center is something that you will not, never be uh, able to see. Even we don't know where our data centers have been clustered. But on a high level, you can see each region is consists of the availability zone where you can provision your VPC. And then VPC within that, you can have your workload that you can provision across multiple availability zone. So within one VPC, you can have like EC2 instance that, uh, or maybe you can define a, a auto scaling group and the EC2 instance that you want to spun up across the multiple availability zones within that one VPC.